So with all the off-ice distractions, is it going to be a problem for the Arizona Coyotes signing extended contracts and free agents? Let's discuss. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Locked On Coyotes, your number one daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. I'm your host, Robin Leonio. That's Matthew Jacobson right beside me on a great episode we got going. We want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. We're asking that question on, you know, did, that over the last couple of weeks, did have these developments have made any distractions? to out, potentially outgoing Coyotes players. Yeah, and I think it's important to start off really trying to set the, the scene because a lot has happened, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the market are familiar with a lot of it, but just in case you're outside of the market or maybe you're living under a rock, I, I think we should probably kind of reestablish everything. So uh, heading into this election, it was generally seen as kind of being in the bag. Like It was a lot of optimism coming out of the Yes campaign, and – Really, someone like me, I didn't pay too much attention to the political aspect of it. I was pretty much like reading ev- all, all the uh, the no stuff. I'm just like, as someone who actually knows the deal, like you sound dumb with this take or that take or this article or whatever. So everything's looking optimistic. But behind the scenes, like a lot of political types are like, this probably isn't going to go the way the Coyotes think it's going to. But the Coyotes are so surefire. It's like, OK, we'll, we'll go to the election and see what happens. And it's a no. And regardless of of whether there are backup plans that everyone in this market knew, and I'm still a little annoyed that we all just like acted like there weren't backups, but we'll, we'll get past that. We've already talked about that quite a bit. But despite the fact there were backups, it was still hard to not be deflated. It was hard to not be depressed by that because we just wanted this to be over with. And Tempe is the perfect spot, the only other spot being downtown if you can make it work and force a sale to Ishbia but we're focusing on Tempe and the current Coyotes ownership. So no matter what, it has to be a distraction. Like that right there to anyone that, that's looking at the long-term stability from the people that work for the team to the players. Okay, well, if I have the ability to go somewhere else, why would I want to stick around here type? That already starts with certain free agents the second this happens. And it could potentially move down the rest of the lineup. But that's just the first reaction. It's a lot of uncertainty. Then you get – the social media stuff. And look, I will stand by the first couple of social media posts. Like I thought they were funny. I was just having fun with it because like, hey, that's what the admin is supposed to do. My issue started, I think, four or five days after that because the joke just kept getting ran into the ground over and over again, at least from my perspective. And, and I never really thought about it until it was reported by Craig Morgan that that was seen as unprofessional from within, including with players. And Robin, I'm going to throw it back to you in a second, but you have the no vote after being a, a surefire thing. Everyone thought it was going to go through to this period of uncertainty. They didn't even bother. I forgot this context. They didn't even bother to re uh, commit to staying in Arizona until the next day. We had to wait like 24 hours to get that announcement. And, and I get it. There's, there's a potential shock aspect of we thought it was going to go through. We, we're kind of taken aback. I get it, but it still had to have been some sort of a distraction, plus the social media stuff, plus the dead silence now. As we're hoping they're actually working on the Fiesta Mall location or somewhere else. Robin, you want to throw some more context on here? Yeah, no, like, and I think you bringing up the social media aspect, I think, was a really important bit because, you know, as someone that, you know, is pretty active on social media, you know, I love to kind of like, you know, play back and forth with, you know, the, the having fun aspect in the in the sense where it's like yeah you know you can make some jokes here you can do that um but you know i thought it was funny i thought it was funny for a little bit longer maybe than you did mm-hmm. um i i think i still think there's some remnants of fun in there but i think the problem is you know when the fact that they just kept going over and over and over again the same joke or, or you know you know uh you know 
you know, X amount of retweets will, uh, we or X amount of likes will reveal who the admin is, or you know, like it's just like, come on, like we've 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 done this already. We just did this earlier this week. Like we let's can we get over this and have you just kind of go back to? I think the I think the idea is cause like I think everyone wants to go back to a sense of normalcy, kind of what what we're all feeling like before the election. We're yeah, we're we still look forward. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah we're still in a, you know, a post, a a post election initial post election reaction. Um, how long that lasts between the coyotes, you know, uh, with the coyotes, social media crew, the marketing crew, as well as the fans, who knows? Because that even the front office, because they got to do it. What you said, like what you said, if they had to figure out where they're gonna go. Um, you know, hopefully they're figuring out things that at Fiesta Mall. I think a lot of people have been making retweets about that. Like that, that that's just let's just focus on that. Uh, but it's there's just so many things happening at once that I feel like the uh, coyote, like the just the center of the coyotes universe right now is just a little overwhelmed. Yeah, and and look that that first one that first tweet where it's like oh 25,000 likes and we'll leak our arena plans uh, i'm not gonna lie for at least like five seconds i was like oh i hope that's real but like obviously it was all having fun oh yeah no we but knew that like... was funny like that <laughs> that was a good joke i loved it i loved the energy there were I mean, plenty we of people that were crying in the comments on that one and i'm like dude they're just having fun relax it was just when they kept doing it and it's like oh now it's for the social media admin and they made the biz joke like the next day or whatever, and it, it didn't even reach the twenty five thousand likes. I'm like, because it was funny the first time, but like your act. This is no offense to the admin, all right. I, I don't know you as a person. I'm not saying you're a bad person or anything, but it was very childish, very much like a, a toddler with the same joke over and over again, hoping that the laughs keep coming. And I think that's where I became annoyed. Because, like, the first time was, like, lighten up, we're having fun, we should be allowed to have fun at a time like this. Then it's like, okay, you had your fun, let's get back to business, because I only want to see you tweeting when we have a, a contract extension, the draft's up, or, hey, we have a press conference scheduled to discuss the, the arena option. I, that's what we're all looking for, and I think that's why it, like, it soured for me. I also feel like, you know, with all that happening right now, it's almost like a case of, and maybe it's just kind of the way, maybe it's just me just being pessimistic and just kind of the way I feel. Maybe it's just a case, it's going to be a case of like, you know, boy who cried wolf, right? Where they're just making jokes. Hey, we're going to leak our, we're going to leak our um, arena details. Hey, we're going to do this. Hey, we're going to do that. And they just kind of just keep trolling and joking. Um, it's, it's, it kind of makes me almost desensitized to when, the actual details are actually released. I'm like, can I believe this? I don't think I can. Yeah, and, and it, it's going to sour people because, like I said, the first one thought it was funny. The out of towners that were crying, it was fun to to dunk on them a little bit. I'll have fun, but like when more of the fans are getting gradually more and more annoyed as the time goes on, it's like it was good the first time. Should have dropped it. And uh, I do want to want to jump into. A little additional context plus our thoughts on how much of a distraction this this is after this ad break real quick but there's definitely going to be some distraction with what with the route they've chosen but we'll get to that in a second absolutely i don't just let you guys know but today's for that today's episode is brought to you by ebay motors for championship team it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit the same for when it comes to your vehicle every part needs to fit just right so the next time you need parts and accessories, has the eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know your part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home the win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible to items only. Exclusions apply. So, Matt, let, let's go ahead and kind of like 
you know, shift. Obviously, we talked about kind of like how our thoughts were about, you know, the you know these latest developments and creating distraction. If it's if it's the way we're feeling, you can imagine how some of these players are. There are, you know, they're like, you know, we, we a lot of players who are thinking like, do I want the, do I kind of want to be in the center of this? Do I want to be a part of this right now? I don't, and like, and it, it, it maybe some of us just say, you know what, I'll stick it around, but I don't blame them for asking that question. Yeah, and from Clayton Keller's agents taking a meeting with the team and saying we want answers, which is logical. We've been on Keller's side the entire time with that. I do think I could speak for both of us on that one, where mm-hmm. it's like he he's owed the answers. He's the face of the franchise um, to that question and answer that Craig Morgan answered, saying that from within it was seen as very unprofessional with the social media stuff. And when he mentioned players, that – that shot out to me because I never even thought about what the players might feel about the social media stuff on top of the arena vote, on top of the uncertainty. I was around for the 09 you know, bankruptcy. I was around for the 09 10 season. And that was a, I think I mentioned before on this show, that was a veteran heavy team. And I do feel like they were more uniquely equipped to be able to work through that. This mm-hmm. is a very young team. And for Logan Cooley, who was already kind of the first quote unquote casualty here. He even said he was leaning on going pro, was reported by Craig Morgan, and the vote kind of swayed him. The vote swayed him to go back to college. And while I support the decision because he's a good kid, good talent, let him just focus on the hockey and keep getting better. And also, I'm pretty sure he can back out at any moment if he wanted to. So, like, if the Fiesta Mall gets announced tomorrow, I think they could steal him back. But in reality, you don't want that hanging over the kid because that can mess with his development. Uh, for some of the older guys like Kells, I don't, I don't think it'll do too much, but it, that's really pivotal for the really younger players. But in your opinion, how much has all this off-ice stuff potentially caused a distraction and uncertainty for a lot of these guys? We have a, we're going to talk about on a bonus episode later on today, so stay tuned about all the different you know UFAs and RFAs. How many of these guys might be thinking, do I want to stick with this? Do I want to deal with you know, the unprofessionalism or the uncertainty. I think there's a, probably it's safe to say there's a decent handful that can say, Hey, you know, I think this just might be too much for me. I want out. Um, I can't really say maybe on, on, you know, on a, like in in a concrete number, but look, there are a lot of players out here and, you you know, out right now who, you know, very well can get the same opportunities they are now, you know, getting those rebound chances, getting, getting them, getting their shot to, you know, you know, play for a team and also be a difference maker. The Coyotes are, you know, we, we, we said, I've met said multiple times, it's the perfect opportunity for a lot of those players because it's because of the rebuild because of that. But when you add that, it just adds more pressure to them. I don't think they want it. So I think there's. it's safe to say there are a handful. Um, maybe some of you guys can make a good estimate on who those might be because, like like I said, it's focused on the players who kind of just came to kind of, you know, get a refocus on their careers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, there's going to be at least a couple of players that would have signed the – one player that's coming to mind right now, and that's uh, this is not an official prediction or anything. It's an RFA, it's Christian Fisher, where uh, it was brought up on, on a different show but by a couple other hosts that something like the uncertainty surrounding the team could mean he signs a one-year deal, walks to free agency, and is gone because like he wants to be here. He wants to stay here. He's loved the market, and I'm, I want to use him as an example because everyone knows how much he loves this market. If someone like that – could could potentially at this point be thinking, hey, do I want to set myself up to be stuck here or should I walk myself to free agency? That has to say something for the rest of the guys in the roster when a guy like Christian Fisher is a good glue guy for the locker room is potentially considering his options like that. Yeah, because I've, you know, I, I, I was one of the people who, I mean, I, I, you know, knowing the way Christian Fisher was, I was like, this guy is he's he's gonna be one of the like the quote like you know yotes for life. I feel like he's gonna stick around. Um and the fact that it's reported that he is kind of the one that one of the ones that's looking at the distractions, it's like 
this might be a little bit, you know, more complicated than we had initially imagined in just the initial blow. We're a couple weeks after, like, we're like, well, almost two weeks since the election. Um, and it's, and the, the, the first couple days versus the versus now, it just feels so different. Yeah. And, and we're also getting closer to the announcement because regardless one way or the other, and I, I'm still going to stand by the hard deadline has to be the start of the regular season. But one yeah. way or the other, we're going to get that announcement, that notification that either, hey, we've signed the agreement to buy the, the Fiesta Mall location. Hey, we figured out this county island. They're going to buy the old Oceanside site. Or the Arizona Coyotes are up for sale and then will potentially be relocating to wherever. It, it doesn't matter which route it goes. We're going to get that notification. We're going to get that clarity at some point. Like I said, I'm going to stand by around October, I, I I just, I don't want it to be the negative side. Yeah. I don't want it to be I'd, the, I'd rather, I mean, I'd, of course, re- I'd rather see, I said rather see it earlier. I mean, mm-hmm. look, there's, there was that, what, that 45 day, you know, window that, you know, Keller and his agents pretty much gave that they want. Yeah, the 45 day window, of we need something concrete. And you know what? In 45 days, they could be closing in on a sale. For Fiesta Mall, it's, the details aren't quite finished yet. It's still going to take another couple of weeks because these things take a while to close. But as long as they have that, as long as they have the, hey, we're in deep discussions, we're trying to get the finalizing bits, Keller is not going to care. He's going to be like, okay, I just I just wanted to know what was going on. Thanks for the clarity. Yeah, and that makes sense. And like, I, I think that's what, you know, I think we all want that, right? So, like, I think, you know, it's not out of the realm to say we all want clarity because look, we could like, I don't want to have to talk about the distractions, the potential arena sites or, you know, any other speculation for two, three months straight. Like it's too much. Yeah. And, and as someone, like I said, who was right there for the 09 bankruptcy and it, it, it was kind of put in perspective by, by, Steve Peters on, on a different show, but it's like, you know, this felt real uh, in terms of a, a relocation threat, just like with 09. I think there's one of the other, other potential time, but it might've been when I was a little iffy on, on, I felt betrayed by them destroying that 2012 core, but we could talk about that a different day, but it, it was a real thing. It still is a real thing. All right. Because just because I think the team's going to stay and I think they're going to figure something out, or I would prefer they just force a sale to Ishbia and the team stays here regardless, it does not mean there is no possibility of, of a re- relocation. It, just, it doesn't. You can't eliminate the possibility yet. Uh, I'm green for some reason, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like it, it could get a little up in the air, you know, coming up here soon. Yeah, and and, and you you'd, you'd really hope that again, like I said, it's just sooner rather than later, because if it, the longer it drags on, the more you know other players are gonna have more hard dates to be like, look, we need, especially the ones that are pending free agents, right? It's like, look, we want clarity, we want to know, because the free the the free agency period's coming up, like. And let's say that, so we got the, like, like, example, we got the draft coming up in about a month from now, now, at the the point that a lot of you guys are listening to this. Um, So, like, there's that. And then, like, what comes right, you know, about less than a month after the draft, the free agency window. So, there's, I believe that that is a really good idea of when, I believe, at the very least, Maybe like, okay, yeah, sure. You can drag the fans on for a little bit longer. But at the very least, tell the players what the deal is. And just to kind of make it real, I'm I'm looking at at their cat friendly right now. These are guys that are not up right now, but they're up next year. Uh, Barrett Hayton, Yusuf Valimaki, J.J. Moser. Just a, a couple of names of, in my opinion, key players on this team. If, if there is no clarity, let's just say we hit that 45-day window. They're like, we still don't know. And now Keller is starting to be like, if you don't figure it out, I'm going to request a trade. All right. So a guy like Hayton, who's going to be an RFA, all three of those names are, are RFAs. We'll even throw Picker Soda's jump in there. Um, what if those guys are like, I don't want to re-sign long-term? 
hey, I'd rather be moved. Can you trade me? I won't re-sign my contract. That's potentially four guys that have nothing left after this year, minus RFA rights, that you'd be trying to move on from in a very short period of time. And if and if you lose the core, the franchise falls apart as a whole. Like those those are like, you know, pretty either core or like rising star players who you just cannot let go. If you do, everything falls apart. Even if this team, you know, eat, like it gets end up forced to relocation, like I don't even see foresee foresee them succeeding anywhere else. Because it they're like at least for many, many years, because there that puts them in a a deep hole is an understatement that that would put them in. It puts them into like Mariana's trench. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because again, just those couple couple pillars fall. Let's just say those four names I mentioned, all four of them want gone, and you can only get like draft picks for them. This this team right now is a little ahead of schedule on, on this rebuild. You lose a twenty two year old center. Uh, a, a couple 22-year-old defensemen and a waiver-claimed 24-year-old defenseman that fit in very well here and took a literal pay cut to sign another one-year contract, obviously betting on himself and, and trying to get that longer-term deal after. But literally, you do that, the defense is already thin enough. Like They, they have a, a couple of prospects coming up, Zub and, uh, Zuber and, uh, and Lang Lawal come to mind, but it's not enough talent coming through to hold the dam back if that were to happen and your center depth while looking okay right now also takes an immediate hit if barrett hayden for example decided he wanted out it it brings you from being slightly ahead of schedule to you're probably having having to re-blow it up again and you're doing another start and stop on your on your rebuild and let's just say it's it's quebec right let's say they get moved to quebec quebec's not going to have a good hockey team to watch for like five six years if that were to happen yeah, I mean, like, um, it would be a situation like, I the, yeah, just the financial viability. No matter where a team goes, I think it'll struggle um, for for just way too long. That it would even like, I don't even know. Like, this is it. It has rarely ever happened. So like, it the chance of it happening very low. I don't even know why I'm entertaining the idea of this potentially even happening. But who's to say? that a such a deep collapse doesn't lead to just an outright fold uh i say it wouldn't fold for a, just a couple of basic reasons like the nhl just would not allow it and they would right. just the the remainder of the franchise would get sold off and they'd have to like stop and start kind of a thing but i i, I don't think we're ever going to see a modern team fold but we we damn well could see the closest thing to a modern fold if if that were uh, to, to be the case, and while guys like Krauser, you know, Schmalzi, and Keller are all signed long term, theoretically, this is also me basically taking a direct quote from Steve Peters. Could tell the players, well, too bad, you're stuck. <laughs> you are literally just stuck here. Um, you you could go that route for a couple of them, but you're going to lead to less production and also future players not wanting to sign for you. So it, it's pivotal to make sure. Whatever your long-term plans are, they get solved relatively quickly, and you have that that disclosure and that information going towards the players because it, this literally that vote, the 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 managerial decisions that led to the vote being lost, that the lack of spending, the not doing enough for the door-to-door campaign, the not doing enough like having a, a booth or something set up on on campus to get some of the students involved. In fact, they did not do enough on that campaign, like directly cause all of this uncertainty and unless you start to get back to that sense of normalcy with some strong leadership and getting things done right now, it's a house of cards that could fall like realistically could actually fall. Yep. And, you know, and as we mentioned, um, you know, in the initial, you know, a couple days since, uh, since the election that, I, I, and I'm, maybe this might be one of the last episodes that we recorded because we had a lot of other things to talk about. <laughs> um, but there will be, like, you know, whatever, if the Coyotes end up falling the way that way and they end up relocating, whatever it is, the vacuum 
that occurs on the community, not just youth hockey, but adult hockey, everything here in the Valley just sucks up dry. Look, we just had an, an episode we talked uh, of Grow the Game. Um, if you didn't listen to that, I highly recommend that you guys listen to it. We talked we talk with the president and founder of the uh, Arizona Warrior Hockey Charities. Talked about, you know, essentially creating a, a way to help, you know, t uh, injured veterans kind of rehabilitate and play, play a sport like hockey. What happens to something like that if you don't get the support propped up? By a team here, or by a, or just in just in general, what happens? That just gets sucked dry. Yeah, and eventually, everything just kind of whittles down to the basics again. To kind of take an idea from Steve Peters, you'll still have people playing hockey, but it'll be less and less every year. You'll have like essentially be a niche sport, but not even just from the kids' perspective. You'll have less and less adult leagues, less and less of the, of the more special leagues that you know as. You know, it was mentioned on the interview, the Coyotes did help a decent amount with, with propping up the, the Warrior Hockey to where it's like, without that driving force, it becomes that much more difficult. Doesn't mean it can't be done, doesn't mean it won't stick around in some form, but it becomes that much more difficult to keep everything up and running. Yeah, and look, we like out of the series that we've done, we've had, I've been, we've interviewed two um two different organizations, five, you know, five oh one C three nonprofits. Who have gotten the support from the Arizona Coyotes, the Arizona Warrior Hockey, and then the Alpha program that we did an episode some um, a little over a year ago. Like those are two programs that I believe are really like with, with those new those those are niche groups. You know the the Warriors and the Pride. I I just cannot foresee those ever like completely dying. But I did I, but the growth would be gone. Like you said, you just can't see it much growing much past it because the visibility is no longer there um so it's it's a domino effect like, like like what you said it's like a house of cards one you know like if the pillar falls the entire damn thing falls apart yeah and literally starting with the the failed campaign the second that wasn't done properly it, it turned into something that was becoming a solid foundation because the roster is a solid construction. The amount of assets and whatnot they have in the future are solid assets to help them continue to flush out the team. Hey, we need this. We have three for you know three second round picks. We can move off from that to get this. We move up here, get this player. Like it's such a solid foundation, and it, it it's kind of, of disheartening to see the actual realistic possibility of because of a couple of bad decisions, a couple of poor leadership decisions, and, and a failed campaign that that solid foundation could wither away and just topple over. Absolutely. Um, well, I think we're just about running out of time on anything that else that you want to touch on before we uh, close on the close off, at least on this episode. Um, nah, you'll, you'll see me in, in, in like five hours. <laughs> well, that's going to be it for today's episode of the Locked on Coyotes podcast. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We are available everywhere you get your podcasts. Also, just a quick heads up, be sure to tune in later today. We are going to be talking a little bit more, um, you know, Coyotes focused on outgoing on outgoing contract, what happens with pending RFAs, pending UFAs for the years and the Coyotes. Who resigns? How is it going to go? We're going to get into all those in, all that information uh, later today. So just be sure to stay locked in. But don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash locked on coyotes and on Twitter at LO underscore coyotes. And personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Matthew Jacobson is at the Izzy Sports Guy. Interact with us, ask a question you might have. We might interact right back or on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on. <laughs>